Yes, now I am, Trace. Um, welcome, everyone. We're really excited um, that everyone's here. We're just gonna wait a few more minutes, just uh, another minute or two to let some people um, jump in last minute. Hey, Sienna, how are you? So glad you could make it. Um, we're really excited to host this webinar today. This was a topic that was requested um, by a number of people. So we know that it's something that is valid and, um, and something that's impacting a lot of a lot of young people learning to manage stress is not something that comes easy so um, we're here today to talk about some strategies that you can apply in your life that will um, help you be more successful and and hopefully um, ease the tension of stress in your life because we all know stress can be very challenging especially for patients with HAE so um, welcome everyone who's coming in. Just waiting for a couple more people to show up. I think we'll go ahead and get started. Troyce, ready? Give me a thumbs up if you are. All right, we are ready to go. All right, so um, first of all, thank you all for joining us. This is our second uh, official youth webinar and we do have this new series of youth webinars that we started this year 2018 where we're doing quarterly webinars to um, focus on youth related issues so these webinars are designed specifically for young people addressing topics and issues that are youth specific so we really tailored this um, presentation today to be something that will hopefully be useful for you and something that you can apply in your life and that will hopefully help you um, think about new ways to deal with stress. We know that stress is something that affects um, everyone and especially um, as you get older and you know, you're dealing with all kinds of things in your life, school, friends, family, extracurricular activities. Um, there's a number of stress related factors and just the fact that you have HAE have to think about this all the time, um, and, and, and it's constantly kind of in the back of your mind. That's an added stress as well. So um, one of the things I just want to emphasize here is that, you know, we're going to really be emphasizing stress is normal for everyone. Um, stress is something that's unavoidable, but we really want to emphasize that there are some things that you can do to minimize the impact that stress has in your life and to better understand the way that stress affects your body because it really does have, um, have an effect, a physiological effect on your body. And, um, and it's actually really interesting to, to learn about, um, about that process. So um, one of the things that, that is really important to recognize here is that um, stress is actually one of the most common triggers for HAE attacks that have been reported um, in a number of studies. And, um, and we know that stress impacts our bodies. Um, stress can impact HAE and, and lead to attacks. And so again, it's just really important to find ways to manage stress and minimize the impact that stress has on your life. Um, and so moving forward, stress can come in all different forms. Stress is normal, um, but especially um, as a young person growing up, um, you have stress from school, tests, exams, studying, um, dealing with just the regular stresses that come with school, preparing for essays or, you know, just studying period is stressful. Um, knowing that you have deadlines um, can be a, a big challenge for a lot of people. Family, growing up, um, family can be a huge source of stress for a lot of young people. Um, everyone has stress as it relates to their family and, and learning ways to really effectively cope with that is going to be monumental kind of as you move forward in your life. Um, friends, we all have friends and we know that social networks um, can, can cause stress too, especially when you're young and, um, and dealing with the social networks at school um, and online today, there's a lot of stress that comes on with, with um, issues that you see online. 
Um, extracurricular activities, some of you may be uh, doing sports, participating in, um, in work, maybe. Um, some of you may be in clubs and that have additional requirements. Um, and so there's a number of different things. And then just as a, as a reminder, we all have HAE. And, and that can be a stress as well. And so when you put all of these things together, they can oftentimes build up. And, um, and finding ways, again, to effectively manage these, um, these different things in your life is so important. Um, and so I know that Troyce, whoops, was going to, um, we have our special guest, Troyce. She's here and she was going to provide a couple tips and, and some insight here. Troyce, I'm going to go ahead and unmute you. And leave the um, oh, and leave the PowerPoint on. Okay. Okay. So um, hi guys, hi everybody. Uh, I'm Troyce. I'm also an HAE patient. I'm not what you would consider in the youth um, section of life, but <laughs> I think that uh, it's important for us all to recognize how stress can have an impact on our bodies. So thinking about stress, we all, like Lisa mentioned, everyone goes through stress, no matter what age. If you're um, a young person who, you know, maybe is elementary, middle school, all the way up to, you know, high school or college, we have a couple of college students with us tonight. So, and then, and then there's parents, maybe there's some parents on, we all deal with stress, we all have stress. And what is, what happens to our bodies physically whether you have HAE or not, there are some things that happen to your body um, that, that can have a negative effect. Um, and so I'll go into that in a minute, a little bit more detail. But one thing I want you to think about is there's positive and negative stress. And, and we sometimes think about uh, writing a paper, having an exam as being a negative stress, which at times it can be. <clears throat> But there's also positive stress in our lives, whether it's our birthday, um, you know, the holidays are coming up. Actually, for us all right now, it's almost summer break. And so we're excited about that. Maybe you have travel plans coming up. Um, maybe there's, you know, a big family vacation. And so that's exciting, and, but it can cause stress, just the excitement of it. So there's positive and negative stress but they both really can affect us in the same way. Um, and it's, it's really, so cortisol is something that we all have in our body. And it's just, um, you know, an enzyme that we all have. And the, the challenge is that with stress, cortisol increases. And so some of you guys have heard of fight or, or flight, right? So something kind of bad happens, you see an accident, and you hear about people being superheroes and they can lift this car up and how can they do that? And it's because they've had a huge increase of cortisol during that stressful time. Um, and so you need it for a very short period of time, but if you keep stress and you keep cortisol in your body for too long, it causes inflammation, which is edema. And so most of us on this call today know that edema is something that our bodies can't always deal with <laughs> the right way. And so shutting down and, and having too much cortisol, which causes edema in everybody, even if you don't have HAE, but having too much of it for too long um, can, can create challenges for you when, when we think about us with HAE and how we can you know, eliminate some of that swelling. Um, now, trust me, I understand that HAE is not caused, the swelling from HAE is not from cortisol. I understand that, but I'm just saying that cortisol can increase edema in your body, and so you don't need that extra push. We already have challenges with edema in our body. So, and then the other thing I wanna really express, uh, express is, um, so sometimes when we have a lot of HAE, we can, um, kind of get a little depressed and anxious about it and stress that's something that can occur and so thinking about um, some people say that when uh, when I was a teenager that I was depressed because I hate HAE well not really it was because of all the stress involved in um, having HAE um, so Lisa can you go to the next screen so this screen is just a little bit about how your body is affected by stress. And um, 
So, you know, we talk about our brain that's difficult to concentrate. We all know when we're under stress and anxiety, it is hard for us to concentrate. And, and increased stress can make us depressed. And so we don't want that. We want to have techniques to get out of it. You think about your heart or cardiovascular, you know, you, uh, we are all too young, and even though I'm not, to have high blood pressure. Um, but there are side effects it, related to our heart. Um, our joints and our muscles, once again, you can have increased inflammation and you get aches and pains. And you guys are out there being active, playing in sports, and with increased stress, it makes it harder to do that. Um, with your immune system, it's hard to fight infections. And just like stress can be a trigger for some of us with HAE, infections can also be a trigger. And so increased stress makes it harder to fight infections. And so we don't want to have uh, another challenge fighting infections because of our stress. Um, and you know, it can affect our skin. People who have a lot of stress can lose their hair, can have really dry skin. Um, it can affect your belly, your gut. So you can have, you know, diarrhea or constipation, can have bloating, just pain in your belly um, from increased stress. And then the other is our reproductive system. So we think about the hormones for girls, uh, you know, our menstrual cycles, and for boys, just the increased hormones. All of these parts of our body can be affected by stress. And so we want to talk a little bit about how we can help control stress or manage stress in our lives. And I'm really excited. I'm going to turn it back to Lisa because she's got you know, some other really awesome guests to kind of talk about how they um, manage stress. Yeah, so thanks, Trice. That's really awesome. And, and I think it's just really important to understand the biology of stress and, and how it actually happens in our body and that it really does have a physical effect on us. Um, it's just something to keep in mind because we do see how it has a physical effect um, as it relates to our HAE. And sometimes it's hard to think about um, stress having such a, a significant impact on your body, but it does. Um, and we have a couple um, HAE patients who are um, here as guests today. They're both college students at different points in their educational careers. And they were going to um, talk to you guys a little bit about ways that they manage stress and deal with stress. Um, in their lives and hopefully give you guys a couple tips and some insight um, into ways that you can um, manage stress in your life. So first I'm going to introduce Allison. Um, I need to find her here. There we are. I'm going to go ahead and spotlight you, Allison, um, and stop my share. So Allison is 19 years old. You are a freshman in college, and you are a, um, a chemistry major. Yes. Um, and you're going to talk to us a little bit about how you manage stress in your life. Okay. Well, um, when it comes to my studies, I find that it's best when I do my work ahead of time because it allows me to have time to not stress. Because I've done it in the past where I'll wait to do assignments and I'll really just push things off and then doing it the day before never works out for me because I become more stressed than I should have been and that leads to me usually being sick. So I think that working ahead of time is re a really good idea, especially when it comes to school and definitely college. Um, also, when I'm studying and stuff, I feel like I become overwhelmed at times when I be like when I get stressed. So in those moments, I find that it's a good thing to take breaks and I go and do something that I really find enjoyable. So what I personally do is I go for a run or I paint and I do things that like really calm me and then I can get a second wind of studying. And actually at my university, they have a program called um, the Student Services with Disabilities, I believe. And I think it was a really good thing for me to get involved in because it's allowed me to relieve that stress that I once had about missing classes. And in high school, I actually would talk to my teachers and I think I actually had a meeting with my principal when it came to attendance wise because I missed a lot of school in high school. And it was a really good thing for me to be able to keep my grades up and stay on top of things. 
Um, also, when it comes to being sick, like with the cold or anything like that, um, I always make sure that I watch out for any types of symptoms that I have of HAE attacks, because if I feel anything, then I make sure that I take my medicine and I inform someone if I need to. So I think that it's really important if you're feeling any type of symptom that an HAE, t HAE attack is coming on, that it's important to catch it early so you don't have any problems later on and it won't affect you. And um, let's see. Also, I think that whenever I'm doing my assignments and things, and when I take tests, even when I don't do as well as I want to on certain exams, I always make sure to just take it as it comes. Like, although I'll be disappointed sometimes, I don't want to allow that to stress me out because I know it's just, it's one test and it's not the determining factor for everything. So I think that to manage your stress when it comes to tests and, and stuff is a really good thing because it'll allow you to just relax and then set goals for the next test that you'll do better and it's just kind of a process. And I think that's really important. Awesome. Thank you, Allison. If, you, if anyone here has questions for Allison or um, any of our guest speakers or for me or you come up with questions throughout this, process, please feel free to um, jot them in the chat feature and we'll address your questions as we go. I really encourage you guys to ask questions um, because um, that's going to be how we, you know, how we get answers to, to our thoughts and, and what we're thinking. So awesome. And one of the things that I really liked that you pointed out was that you um, went to the disability services at your school and mm -hmm. utilize those services. So um, at every school, and college, there is a, some form of um, a disability services that are available to all students. Um, and with a documented note from your doctor, these are services that you can use to burden some of the stresses at school and allow for some accommodation when you're dealing with some, um, uh, when you get sick or, or certain issues like that. I know that it was super useful for me when I, um, when I was in college. So definitely that's something um, I really, I think that's a great, great point. And um, another thing you said was just the fact that you're um, not procrastinating when it comes to schoolwork. I think that's also so important because when we procrastinate um, with schoolwork, then, um, you know, sometimes it comes to the last minute and then you can get an attack. And then maybe you don't finish your schoolwork because you had an attack and and then you turn it don't get it in on time and so it can be kind of like a domino effect um on your schoolwork and and your you know how you're doing in school because one thing leads to another and then it can it can cause more stress because you procrastinated so those are some awesome tips thank you so much for sharing allison you're um, the next thank you uh the next um person we have is jack jack is um let me spotlight your video jack and um, make sure that you are not muted here. Okay, awesome. So Jack's 28. He is in his last semester of nursing school and he is uh, studying to be a pediatric um, oncology nurse. And you're just graduating this month, right? Yeah, next week. Oh, next week, that's so exciting. Yeah. <laughs> um, go ahead and, and, um, and share, share some of the things that, you know, what's going on in your life with stress. Uh, yeah, so nursing school is, I'd say, one of the hardest things I've ever done. Um, it's built with a lot of stress. Uh, there's um, definitely the coursework that you go through is very intensive, and they really push you to your limits, um, along with having clinical and everything else. So you, you do a lot, you see a lot, and it's just a bundle of stress, you know. Um, so learning to manage that stress was really important to me because in the beginning, it was kind of difficult to figure that out and I was swelling a lot and in and out of the hospital and um, I got kind of lucky it's usually like after final stuff like that when your body starts to calm down after all the stress it's usually when you get your sickest um, as far as like cold flu but also for me it was HAE so um, it usually happened like after all the finals and stuff but uh, it happened sometimes in between 
So some things that kind of helped me get through to my senior year, finally, um, was I prioritized my goals and my tasks. I made lists, um, made sure to do like the hardest thing first, um, and then just kind of doing the easier things um, like later on. So like in nursing school, we often got a long list of what we're supposed to do for the entire semester. And it is extremely stressful to see the amount of work that they pile on you and expect you to get done, uh, you know, in a certain manner. And there's all the uh, deadlines you have to meet. So for me, getting that most important part done, that, you know, 10 page paper, or whatever you have to do, um, you know, get it done out of the way um, and let the little piddly stuff kind of uh, trickle in at the end. And it just really relieves a lot of stress off if you can um, hammer that workout quickly. Um, so, and then another thing I want to say is like, don't be afraid to ask for help. Um, for us, we have our clinical mates. We have, uh, you know, there was eight of us in my team and then um, other uh, clinical mates from other groups and stuff like that. We'd all help each other. We all talked about what assignments we're doing, um, you know, what they did for that, you know, where they found these resources and stuff like that. You know, college shouldn't be just a you standalone kind of thing. Um, it's all about the experience of getting together and meeting new people and having new experiences. So therefore, you know, when it comes to your work, you shouldn't just do it by yourself. You know, if it's something that you can get help with or, um, you know, something along those lines, do it. Like I went to a, a tutor three times a week for chemistry when I started because I never took a chemistry class before. So I got through it, but I got the help that I needed. And that really helped relieve a lot of my stress. Um, I also want to say, like, make some time for fun, you know, do some hobbies, uh, get out there, don't just uh, study every single day and, and, you know, don't do anything other than just school, experience college, have fun with it, you know, because uh, this is the only time you're going to be able to do something like this in your life, um, you know, so it's definitely worth getting fully involved in with your college experience. Um, I sometimes like when I'm studying or something like that and I get kind of overstressed or something like that, I like to jam up to some music, you know, blare the music, kind of, uh, you know, distract yourself if you need to every now and again, you just kind of get away from it. If it becomes a little too much, you know, uh, there's, there will be time, um, you know, to study taking 10 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, whatever you need, step away from it for a while. You can come back to it. And usually if you're having trouble with something, when you come back to it, you can figure it out because you're not so stressed out. You're not so focused on one thing. You can see it, you know, at a broader view if you just step away for a little bit. Um, and then if you're having trouble like sleeping or anything like that, I like to do like guided meditation, like play some music at night. There's uh, tons of YouTube videos you can do. Just make sure you're on Wi-Fi. But um, I mean, they have like hours upon hours of music. You can do like full eight hours and just listen to music and it really helps you fall asleep and just relaxes you. And I tell you what, this is like one of the big things that helped me with my stress is uh, just getting a good night's sleep. And, and just relaxing and, and it really makes that, that world a difference um, to just kind of, you know, have that full uh, night's sleep there. Um, and then I would say another important thing is to have that support group, like I said, with your friends and stuff like that. But um, I think it's kind of important to have like one or two people that like, no matter what time of night or whatever, if you're really stressed out, if you are just kind of having a freak out or whatever, have people that you can call, be it a friend, you know, your parents, a, a sibling or someone, someone that you can always call at any time and just talk to them. You know, sometimes talking, getting things off your chest really helps you uh, deal with some of the stress and some of the things that you deal with. Um, and a couple, two last things here, um, get disconnected, you know, take, go off social media, leave your phone in, get out in the woods, you know, take a walk, a hike, whatever, whatever you can around you, um, you know, be in the city, take a walk around, uh, whatever you can do, just disconnect from technology for just a little while. You know, that's, you have all these uh, outside sources coming at you all the time. It's really important to get away from it. Just be you and, you know, especially at, at your ages and everything like that, you're trying to figure out who you are, you know, allow that to happen, you know, let a little self exploration away from all the, you know, media and everything else like that. You don't need all that outside stressors in your life right now. So, and the last thing I have to say, naps are your friend, especially in nursing school. Take a nap every now and again. It's okay. You know, being an adult and stuff, they always say, oh, I always miss naps. Well, take it, you know, <laughs> so.
All right, well, that's all I have to say. So back to you, Lisa. Awesome. Thanks, Jack. I think you brought you brought up some really, really good points. And one of them is like to kind of disconnect and um, and step away sometimes. You know, we're all like literally connected to our phones all the time. And sometimes it can just be kind of stressful and you're always looking at something and, and it's really good, no matter what stress you're dealing with, to kind of step away, take a block, a walk around the block. Um, I know I always had, when I was growing up, I always had would, you know, if I was getting into a, an argument with my parents or I was dealing with something really stressful and I was kind of building up with my emotions, I would kind of step back and I would go to my happy place. Cause I had one happy place in my neighborhood that I found thought was like my safe spot. Mm -hmm. And, and it was really kind of the, the spot and I would let go and I would just sit there. Um, I didn't have a cell phone at the time cause I'm a little older than you all, but, um, but still, it was just that moment where you can kind of sit, peace, relax, and um, and just enjoy the moment. So um, um, I know that there was a question here. Um, so Lisa asked, are all of your professors aware of your HAE health condition? If you have an HAE attack and have to miss class or a test um, or have to turn in an assignment paper late, are they understanding? Yeah, that's a really good question. So what I usually do um, when like the first day of class, I go up and I introduce myself to the professor and I tell them I have HAE. And usually, you know, you get the whole what, you know, so I kind of explain it. Um, so that's one thing I will say, get yourself educated on HAE, learn how it works, um, you know, and if you know what you're talking about, your professors listen to you, you know, and um, talking to the um, different services at school and everything like that, giving actual doctor's notes and stuff does help too, but just a common courtesy is just say, hey, um, you know, this doesn't happen, you know, consistently or all every day, you know, I have no idea when this is going to happen, but um, yeah, this may happen and, uh, you know, let them know and I'll, I'll usually email them or something like that too if I'm having an attack and, uh, you know, can't make it to clinical or, or submit a paper, can't do something, I'm in the hospital and just, you know, give them that common courtesy and usually, everyone's pretty cool and then um if your professor's you know kind of mean about things and not helping you out go up the food chain you know talk to their boss you know if you need to and uh you know i've never had any issues with that but um you know i think i've been a little lucky with my school but i find it just give them the common courtesy so and i think this totally 100 percent applies um to grade school as well high school and middle school communicating with your teachers is so important and inner you know talking to your teachers um in the beginning of school or having your parents arrange a sit down meeting with them just so that they can introduce you and um and make sure that your teachers are aware of what's going on make sure that if you change schools your school is aware of of your situation and so um if this happens it's not just something that um, if you miss class or if so people are aware of what's going on ahead of time if you have to tell them oh I missed school it's because of this they're already aware of like what what really was going on um, um, I, Allison I know there was a question for you as well so I'm gonna um, spotlight your video thank you so much Jack um, awesome thank you so much um, Allison there was someone who um, first of all asked what college you are at Oh, I'm at the University of Texas in Austin. Awesome. And then someone wrote, um, well, first of all, someone really appreciated the tips that you shared um, and can relate to the, a lot of the things that you pointed out, um, especially procrastinating. And then someone asked, how do you manage being in sports or extracurricular activities and schoolwork? Because it seems like it can be overwhelming. Yeah, um, I just make sure that I, I set enough time aside for both, and I actually prioritize my studies before I do any extracurriculars. So if I don't feel ready to do extracurriculars, I usually will put that off until I feel like I'm at a point in my schoolwork where I'm comfortable doing extra things. And then when I am at that point, I usually just make sure I balance it, and if I ever feel overwhelmed, then I just take a breather and then I, I figure out what I should do to calm myself down, whether I should continue doing an extracurricular or what I need to do to just feel less stressed out. Totally. Um, let me see here if there was another question. 
Mm-hmm. Oh, someone else had, had um, kind of bounced off of Jack and said that when I was in nursing school, if you mer- miss more than two days, you automatically failed the semester. How do you handle missing class and continuing the nursing program? Um, Ali, uh, hold on. I'm going to switch back over to Jack really quick. We'll answer this question and then we'll move on. Okay. okay. Um, Jack, does that relate? Do, can you relate to that at all? Yeah, so um, I was kind of typing in, but didn't get it quick enough. Uh, yeah, uh, so with our my school, it's uh, missing two days of clinical. So like class-wise, um, you know, it depends on the teacher. That's usually more lenient, um, like in in like at the campus and stuff like that, because you can make things up. You know, as long as you uh, talk to disability services and everything like that, it's usually a non-issue as long as you let everyone know um, ahead of time and everything like that. But as far as clinical goes. Um, it kind of depends on how bad the attack is. Like I would go to clinical with uh, intestinal swelling and, you know, give myself a dose and everything like that and just kind of have to push through. Um, and my clinical instructors are usually pretty cool with letting me um, like shadow or something where I'm not hands on lifting patients, doing stuff that would really aggravate it and make things really bad. Um, just kind of light duty, if you will. But um you know, we will have like a paper or two you can write if you miss a full day, like you can't go at all. So they'll have you replace like a day with writing uh, with, um, you know, something about something in nursing or something along those lines. So it's just kind of up to you to talk to your school and figure out what their policies are and what they're willing to do because every school is completely different. I know the standards are pretty well the same as the two days, but um, yeah, I would just talk to them and find out what they uh, need you to do. So. That's a good point too, Jack. And, and a lot of times your school will be willing to work with you um, uh, if you communicate with them um, effectively. So thank you guys so much for sharing. I'm going to go back to the um, go back to our PowerPoint here, and I really want to emphasize a couple more really important things. Um, so one of the really really important things here, and I know that um, Allison really touched on this, and just the importance of listening to your body and treating early. And if you don't have uh, medication available um, to treat your attacks, you need to speak with your parents or your doctor about that. And really see um, if you can find um, a treatment plan that works for you. Um, Treating early is gonna be the key to reducing stress from your HAE attacks. We all know that once our attack attack progresses, it gets worse and worse. Um, it, It, there's, it's hard to go back from there. So treating early and listening to your body and knowing that at the first sign that you have an attack and knowing that you can treat and that you have medicine close by or available to you or you can call someone to bring your medication to you or you can go home um, easily to take your medication um, is really important because treating early is going to be, um, it's just going to alleviate that stress and anxiety because a lot of times if we're not on a preventative medication, um, we can have anxiety thinking about, oh, when is that next, when is that next, um, when is that next, uh, attack going to happen? So, um, that anxiety of thinking that we're going to have another attack can can also be considered stress so um uh so kind of moving forward again just knowing that you have medication and if you are doing preventative treatment make sure that you are on time with your medication um that's just going to be one less stressor that you're going to have to deal with um in in dealing with attacks because um having medication available and knowing that um and Jack's saying that that is so important to him that he swelled several times on his way to clinical. And I'm sure having medication and having a treatment plan ready um, helps to alleviate the stress that, that is related to that if you aren't on preventative medication. So um, just one thing to really keep in mind um, moving forward. Um, I do have a couple slides here for Allison and Jack, and we went through them. Um, uh, Trice. You were going to come back and and um, and touch on a couple more things. Here you go. Great. So um, I really really like what Allison and Jack shared some amazing tips and ideas, and pretty much touched on all of these that I was thinking about when I was doing this. So physical activity uh, is great. I love Allison that you go out and take a run, or Jack that you're going for a walk, probably Forest Park. Love it. Um, but uh, just getting outdoors and and getting some fresh air. 
uh, especially if you're in school all day. I know some of you are probably in some sports or activities, which is great, but not everybody. <laughs> um, so I would really encourage you to get your blood flowing <laughs> and, and moving is what gets our blood flowing and really can clear your heart lisa your head i'm sorry lisa's talked about going to you know her happy place or a park or whatever um, whatever that is for you um i live in a place called lake county and so there's lakes everywhere i love to just go you know walk outside around the lake it's amazing another thing uh, i think jack brought up relaxation and deep breathing um, sometimes, uh, if you just count to 10, <laughs> a lot of times I think about that when I want to say something that maybe I shouldn't, <laughs> but you know, so people say count to 10 before you speak. But if you think about taking deep breaths and meditating or listening to really calming music, another thing that's just an amazing benefit is yoga. Um, if you have internet or cable or, um, you usually can get a free, you know, there's, there's yoga on TV and I know it sounds weird and some of you guys are going, what is yoga? But it really can relax you. It's just a way of stretching different parts of your body and it can be relaxing. Another thing, please laugh. Keep a sense of humor. Um, that is so important for all of us to just continue to, to laugh. Um, you know, whether it's talking with friends and laughing or just, you know, having a good time, being out with friends and family. I know sometimes it can be stressful, but it's important to be around your friends. Jack was mentioning, you know, getting a buddy and, you know, just kind of bouncing off. And sometimes you've had a really bad day and you're probably not the only one that took that exam or had that really stressful paper. And, you know, after you submit it, you submit it. You don't know what you've gotten yet, but just you know, hang out together, enjoy the company of your teammates, you know, whatever your social network is. Um, and then, you know, I would say set aside time for hobbies, whatever your hobby is. If you don't have one, find one. Um, like Jack, you know, being in school, probably just reading a book just to read a book. You got, uh, Many of you, not just Jack, are going, I don't have time to read a book. All I have is textbooks and I have to read my textbooks agreed and that is something you have to do but sometimes just reading a chapter in a um i call it a mindless book is so refreshing and and you think i can't because i have to read for my exam and i have this assignment but you know so maybe it's listening to music um whatever it is for you uh, find a hobby. Allison said she loves to paint. I think that's amazing. I don't know how, but um, whatever that hobby is for you. Um, I like to sew and um, oddly enough, I love to iron. I know I'm weird, but it is what it is. You know, so what is it that you like to do? Find that and do it. You know, um, some people just like taking a hot bath. Um, and you know, I know we're trying to be healthy and we're talking about yoga, but some people, what is your comfort food? Like, is it macaroni and cheese? Have a bowl of it, not an entire box, just have a bowl. <laughs> you know, do you play an instrument? If not, pick it up, go find a recorder and drive everybody in your house nuts. Pick up a recorder, learn how to play the harmonica. You know, do you play an instrument? Awesome. You know, take a walk outside and do that. Um, you know, and, and most important, make sure you get enough sleep. I am an advocate of naps. I think they're the best thing that was ever invented and taken away um, from an adult. But I love naps, and but I, I'm joking about that a little bit. But the reality is, you need to get your um, get regular sleep. You know, they say that you're supposed to have you know eight hours of sleep a night, and I bet everybody on here. There's very few of us that could say we did. And so I would encourage you to really kind of set, you know, when you were younger, your parents like you're in bed by nine o'clock and you really didn't like that concept, but you really need a set time. You need your sleep. Your body physically needs to rejuvenate. And the only way it can do that is to relax and sleep is one of the best ways to do that. And I think that's all I had, but love questions. All right, let's see here. So um, there's just some people who made some comments here. I, um, I guess that there is a, I'm sure that there's more than one, but there is a free <laughs> yoga and relaxation apps in the app store, which is uh, always fun and useful. 
Um, you know, we just had some people typing, writing in some of the things that are, um, are relaxing to them. Fishing, slot car racing. For me, it was photography. Um, just being in the moment. Anything that you can do where you're just being in the moment and living in the moment um, can be a huge stress reliever because it takes away any other thoughts that you have about things that are, are stressing you out. So anything that you can do to kind of separate yourself from the stress that you're dealing with at the moment and pull away and focus on something else can be a huge stress reliever. Um, another thing that's really important is to communicate. Communicate if you're stressed about something, you can communicate that. It's not anything to be ashamed about. Um, stress is normal and stress is, is real. Um, and you should be able to communicate, um, you know, if you are stressed with people who care about you um, and they will be able to, to listen. Someone else said that they um, play their keyboard or guitar and sing, um, which is a huge stress reliever. So we all have our little things that we enjoy. Uh -huh. And <laughs> and stepping back for our, for a minute to enjoy those things is going to be really important. So just kind of wrapping up here, um, you know, we've gone over a lot of things in the webinar so far. Um, we've kind of talked about stress being normal. We talked about the physiology of stress and how it really impacts your body, like like for real, you guys. You know, it's not just this thing that people talk about. It's actually something that has physical impact in your body. So, um, so this, this really does um, have an impact on your body. And again, on HAE, um, we talked about that stress can be one of the most common triggers for HAE. So this is super relevant to all of us here. Um, we talked about how to manage school and, um, and preparing and planning ahead. Planning ahead is super important. Utilizing the services that you have at school is going to be really wonderful as well. Um, there are services there that are designed to be available for you to, uh, to help people who need exceptions sometimes. And, and it's okay to ask for um, assistance if you need it because, um, you know, HAE is a real thing and it can really impact your life. And if there are services available to help you, I think it's really great to be able to utilize them. Um, another thing that we talked about was, um, let's see, was finding your happy place and, 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 and taking a moment out um, to, for, for yourself. Um, uh, Jack and Allison talked about a number of things that, they, that really helped them. Um, and we really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for sharing your tips. And we hope that the, everyone who tuned in today was really able to benefit from that. And we hope that anyone who tunes in to this in the future um, is able to, to, bent, to, to learn a little something as well. So if you guys want to view this webinar um, once we're done today, you can do so in the HAE Cafe, which um, it will be available in our webinars archive. So you can go back and review this later on if you'd like. Um, and we just really appreciate you all for coming. Feel free to shoot me an email. I'll write my email here in the chat box. If you guys have questions or comments or want to follow up with me um, for any reason, my email is lisa at haea.org. You can um, follow up with me anytime. I'm here. Um, we have a number of really awesome youth programs, and we will be holding another webinar um in the in a in a few couple months so stay tuned for that one um i think that that webinar is going to be focused on getting involved in events and um and advocacy activities so that should be really fun as well um also i just want to give a shout out um if you aren't already involved in the youth leadership council we do have a youth program that is set up for people who want to be involved in advocacy um uh, the date for the webinar hasn't been announced yet, but I will, um, I will make a note um, and send it out as soon as we, we set a date for it. Um, but we do have the Youth Leadership Council, which is a really wonderful opportunity for young people to get involved in the HAE atmosphere and, um, and activities. We do hold um, quarterly video chats with um, our Youth Leadership Council. Um, it's just a really great way to connect with other young people um, who have HAE and get involved in HAEA events that we hold, um, such as Capitol Hill Day and, and other events that we have going on. So I really encourage you guys to, to 
shoot me an email if someone has a question about that or would like to get involved. You can also go to our website under um, engagement or take action and then engagement, and you'll see a link to sign up for the Youth Leadership Council. Um, let's see, we just got a last minute question. Um, Sienna was asking if anyone has a good system for keeping track of the days that they infused or injected. Um, I've tried to remember to write mine down on the calendar, but it only works 65% of the time. Sienna, I can give you a tip that I use. Basically, what I, what I would do is I would have a um, kind of a spreadsheet, and I would tuck it in to my, my bag where I have all my medicine. So I always remember to grab my spreadsheet whenever I do my medication, and I'd make a note of the days that I infused, if I knew any triggers, um, and, 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 and how much medication I used. So that was really helpful for me just to know that it was with my medication so that when I went to go get my medication, I would grab that as well and make a little note. And then I'd put it back as soon as I was done with my medication. So that's just one tip for you. Um, and, and also you can keep track on your phone um, in your notes section. Make uh, some notes in your phone and keep track that way. Um, and I just want to thank you all so much for joining in. Um, if you have any other questions, well, let's see. I just want to address some of the questions here because people are asking, how do you keep your rescue meds cool while out and about? Um, that's a really good question. Troyce, do you, have, do you want to answer that one? Oh, sorry. I was <laughs> there you go. Sure. Um, so there's a couple of different techniques that people use. Um, and one of the things that I, I personally like for myself, because I did tell you I was an HA patient is, you know, those lunch boxes that are kind of collapsible and, uh, and I live in Florida, so it's always 300 degrees here all year long. I'm kidding about that, but it is usually pretty hot. But so the, the ice packs that come with the medications, uh, I keep one of those. And I just wrap a, um, a paper towel around so it doesn't get all wet everything. And then I put it inside uh, of one of those, I call them collapsible lunch boxes and, and just kind of keep it with me. It, but honestly, if I'm going to be in and out around, then keeping it with me personally. Um, so if I'm going to go to a theme park, I don't want it sitting in my car, right? Because it's very hot in your car. So if you think about... Uh, most of the medications can be right about 77 degrees is safe. And usually you and I don't like to be much hotter than that. So if you are safe and comfortable, then the medication probably is. But keeping it, um, uh, you know, in a, in a little cooler. And um, I would also reach out to the, you know, talk with your parents. But the, the companies that provide the medication, because everybody has something different, they have some great tools for you to use as well. And little carry on and travel tools like that. <coughs> but I like the lunchbox. Definitely. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, Trace. Um, let's see. There was a, um, we put a link here in the chat box for the youth enrollment if you're interested in joining the Youth Leadership Council. And then I also want to give a quick shout out because if you are looking to track your, app, your, um, your attacks, we do have a scientific registry app. So if you go and type in H-A-E-A -E in the App Store, the Scientific Registry app will come up. And you can register for that. And, and Troyce, were you saying something? Yeah, uh, it's called Advanced. Advanced H-A-E. It's called Advanced H-A-E, <laughs> yes. Um, and this is a really great app. And it actually has a little a body figure um, on the app. And you can make notes and point to where you had your attack. Um, and it, and you can log um, and you can log when you had your attack, how bad it was, and your medication as well, I, I believe. So that's a really great um, a great resource as well. So you guys all, thank you again so much. Uh, what is the Youth Leadership Council? Chrissy, if you want, shoot me an email and I'll be happy to, to give you a bunch uh, some more information about it. Um, there's a link at the in the chat feature so you can go in and check that out if you want. But we're gonna wrap up for now. It's been uh, about 50 minutes. And I just wanna thank again, Allison and Jack and Troyce for joining in with us. And I wanna thank each and every one of you for um, joining in and being part of this webinar. We really appreciate you all. And, and again, if you have any questions or you'd like to follow up with me personally, 
lisa at h-a-e-a dot o-r-g is my email address so um we're gonna go ahead and end the webinar and thank you all so much for for joining us thanks, thanks guys lisa. bye thank you